All right, it's another warm day, end of August, end of summer, pretty much uh, here in Richmond, Virginia. So it is nice, clear out, obviously, as you can tell. So I figured I would do a video since I don't have the Mustang back yet. Um, should hopefully pick it up by the end of this week. Um, still waiting on just two parts for this so I can get this done, all the lighting and all the features and odds and ends of this build. Um, and I say it every time that I do this until I find something else. Hopefully it's the last parts that I, I'm going to spend money on because I know this uh, bill for uh, when I take it to Ironwood to get everything done. This one's probably going to be, I'm thinking it's going to be the most expensive since the lift uh, just because the hours that are going to go into this. Um, but good news about the Mustang, uh, the Maximum Motorsports K member I believe had, has uh, shipped um, went through DNA High Performance. I kind of talked a little bit about that last time, I believe, in the last video. It's been a couple, it's been a little bit since I posted a video, uh, maybe three or four days. So, pretty much, long story short, uh, American Muscle on their website, the part number did not match the description of what I wanted. So, the K member that I wanted is for the Coyote Swap, that's what I need. And uh, when I went ahead, and it's been, I ordered this late June, so. Um, I went ahead and called Maximum Motorsports themselves to see the lead times and uh, they told me that they saw my order had the correct bushings and front control arms but the um, K member was not correct so I uh, looked it up on their website or they did from their end as well and said that I need to place an order um, basically through whoever the supplier is or just through them themselves to get the one that I need for the Coyote Swap because the one that I posted, or the one I had first purchased was for a push rod motor and I don't have a push rod. That car didn't even come with a push rod. So, got that situated through DNA High Performance. Um, always coming in clutch with those uh, parts, uh, good pricing. The guys over there, the team over there, um, always. So shout out to them for that. Uh, and went ahead and another person that I um, no, in the Mustang scene that is local actually here works for Turn 5 or American Muscle, one of the two. You know, both are kind of the same, I guess, however that works. Because um, they went ahead and just, can instead of canceling the K member, uh, that's what they were supposed to do, and I thought they did, but they went ahead and just canceled the whole order. So it hit me up and said, like, hey, what's, you know, some thing that I can do? Basically explain the situation as I am now to you guys on YouTube or TV or whatever the hell. And uh, went ahead and got those bushings and front control arms reordered. So it might have pushed me back in the line. Um, so those might be shipped out at a different later date. But no worries, no big deal. It's probably going to be a fall project at this point if that car does uh, see Mustang Week. Um, other than that, I ordered some O2 sensors for Ford F-150 because we figured out what is causing that driver's side, hopefully, I believe, uh, to not read AFR, so once the car is back, I'll shoot a data log over to Lund because the wiring is going to be all fixed on this car. Um, I know this is a Ford Runner, but it's a little Mustang update for you guys real quick. Um, Lund said, uh, whoever I was talking to, to the Lund calibrator, um, they said, try the F-150 uh, O2 sensors because they are longer, so I went ahead and ordered a set of those uh, from the same coyote engine basically just a few different things there um, nothing too major different i guess but those are a little longer um the current one on the driver's side is not reading because it has i believe the bbk o2 extensions or extenders and those throw off the signal or don't allow it to read so we're going to go ahead and hopefully the wires can be moved or stretched but they can't we have the f-150 ones um and those will just be longer and hopefully those will reach no problem. I'll probably just keep them as backups anyways at this point. So no reason to return those. And then hopefully I get the car back. If I do take it to Mustang Week, I can get an appointment to get the both window regulators and uh, weather stripping um, put on there. Unfortunately, I won't get the radio in because uh, car toys is backed up and I really don't know anybody else um, that I kind of trust to do uh, a radio backup camera to make it look neat. I've dealt with them um, I've dealt with them in the past, obviously. They did the Forerunner, really great job, so I kind of just want to stick with the same people. So, anyways, uh, if I do take the Mustang down, hopefully I'll just tow it, uh, maybe for two days or so. That's what I'm kind of looking at, maybe a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday thing. Don't really care about Saturday, it's just a car show, um, and just ends the day, so 
yeah uh anyways so we're gonna get into this video real quick i know that was a bit of a stretch so what this video is just gonna cover is with a forerunner as i wait i've been um obviously i've had the vehicle for almost a year basically a year now coming up next month so i figured you know i've done a lot of maintenance on this vehicle uh, and you always want to do maintenance on vehicles, specifically this one. You want to tackle the common issues that the platform has. And I figured I would just kind of go over that after um, rambling on about the Mustang. So these are just some ideas that kind of give you, or if you own a third gen, I guess a Tacoma would fall into this uh, category two for the 99 to 04 Tacoma, I believe it is, or 03. Um, I don't know much about them. But anyways, some of the things that you can tackle, as you can see, this valve cover is a lot shinier than this one these have the common issue of where this i guess the bolts come loose this side was started to leak a little bit uh probably back early spring they were tightened down it's always these back bolts for some reason but when i first got this forerunner this valve cover was cracked so it was already leaking that was the only comp real issue with this vehicle was um the hose was leak or sorry the valve cover was leaking oil so the i guess they, whoever owned this before me took it to the shop or maybe the prior person because i'm the third owner of this vehicle and they kind of tried to do the same thing on that one and they cracked the valve gas or valve cover so it started to leak so this whole valve cover has been replaced with the oem oem one and it should be good so that's something you want to definitely do uh, the timing chain i believe is something also that you want to do on these vehicles again i'm still learning these vehicles so i probably don't know everything i'm probably miss um pronouncing something along the way so yeah getting this whole like timing cover thing redone um that is something definitely definitely you want to do and also so these radiators have the transmission cooler apparently built into maybe the same or something like that from what i've read because i've had a lot of people comment on videos hey your radiator looks like it this color or something like that it looks like it's to the point that it needs to be replaced because the fluid runs through the transmission cooler i believe is what they're saying and the radiator so uh almost two months ago now probably a little less than that i had the radiator flushed and i had the transmission fluid i guess flushed as well um, they didn't drain it or anything like that so they went ahead and i guess uh, changed it or something so we did that um so everything is good so but i will probably just go ahead and replace the radiator as well knock that out once everything else is serviced on the vehicle um well not serviced but replaced on the vehicle so we'll do that uh, there's no leaks or anything uh, the next thing that i want to tackle is i'm not really going to get underneath the vehicle but uh lower ball joints lower ball joints are apparently a big common issue not a misconception on these vehicles so i'm going to get that done as well um, i've had them checked plenty of times every time i go uh, there's no issues whatsoever they say hey they're good you know there's no need to replace them but i figured since i lifted the vehicle or had it lifted um, it might have maybe changed put some stress on it i don't know so we're going to go ahead and tackle that common uh, problem and i'll go ahead and eliminate that one um, i've read a lot where to go you know what aftermarket company or uh, who to go with it and everybody kind of argues in these forms obviously so I'd, i've you know done my own research you know take everything you hear with a grain of salt kind of thing or salts um oem is the best i have uh so apparently japan you can order a set from japan and it's shipped fast through amazon or something like that so we're going to go ahead and do that that is another thing you want to tackle um another common issue is apparently these hoses right here crack along here luckily this one hasn't even though i've swapped it out for you know polar intake once or twice to see what happens just honestly went back to the factory nothing wrong with it air filter you always want to change that of course um these hoses i know these hoses dry rot and crack uh luckily these haven't seen that um i did have these all replaced back here i had the rear heater so it was a little more expensive uh, those are replaced so that's good have these replaced with the mishimoto silicone kit as well the upper and lower as you can probably see down there uh, that is also mishimoto so if you go to their website they have the whole kit i think it was around 500 bucks for everything not bad whatsoever pretty easy to do but you always want to replace these when you pull them uh that part i forgot what you call it 
but when you pull them out apparently they break easy so I went ahead and had ironwood replace that as well I mean you can see some of these hoses are kind of older dingy so I think there's kits out there where I can just get some really nice black looking ones that kind of match the highlighted silicone right here kind of make it look a little fancier not fancier but cleaner underneath I'd honestly really like to get underneath the hood cleaned everywhere so hopefully we'll do that or have that done um, I might have somebody detail the vehicle um, I wash the vehicle all the time I try to I try to keep this thing clean um, obviously there is and this the scratches this the trim starting to peel but that isn't to worry because next year uh, I've talked about this before in the videos the Mustang is gonna be painted and so is this they're gonna take care of just stuff like this as well the only issue I don't even really see an issue what it's gonna be headache maybe for the person is to have to take off like all the lights and stuff but that shouldn't be uh, a bad you know they probably somebody that does this all the time is probably used to it what I'd honestly like to do is get this removed and get the badges removed I don't know if I'd keep the Toyota badge. I believe they're just held on by 3M tape or something. I don't know, double-sided. So I'd like to get that and just debadge it like the Mustang to make it look clean. I think it would just look cleaner, honestly. And we already know what it is. Um, well, maybe not everybody, but everybody would probably know what it is. I don't really care that it says like Sport Edition. I'd honestly get those removed too. I think it just looks better to be badged. Um, less is more on that, on that type of person. So, but everything, uh, the only other thing that I'm believe I want to maybe change. So on the TRD Raptor lights or grill lights or whatever you want to call, you can see them right there. There's three of them on my, the app on my phone. I can change the color display. So I might change it to that, you know, everybody does forerunner green or whatever it is. And I might switch out the fog lights to, uh, that green kind of like yellowish green, amber color, whatever it is. Kind of just change it up a little bit. And I'm, I've been looking recently now at exhaust, so I want to get like a cat back because the muffler it has a crack in it, a hole from the rust. The vehicle luckily is, is rust free. Um, it's just one of those things that, you know, it's all OE, just needs to be replaced. Still want the tailpipe to come out at the factory side how it does, but like a, a polished exhaust tip would look cool, I guess. Um, it looks like MBRP, Borla, Magnaflow. I think Magnaflow was probably my favorite. Um, I'm very familiar with them, obviously. I'm actually familiar with all three. The Mustang has had Borla and currently has MBRP, um, but I've had, you know, I've heard Magnaflow a hundred times being in the car scene and being around uh, Mustangs. Uh, I know that they make, you know, quality parts and stuff like that. So the kit's probably, I think it's around like 600 bucks for the whole cat back. You know, have that done before winter time comes so it doesn't eat up that muffler more, the rust and when they drop salt down in the snows and then my car for some reason one day is just a little louder come to find out the uh, muffler just has a bigger hole that happened to me with the mustang when i first owned it um, somebody put flow master exhaust or knockoff ones and uh, the first year that i owned it it had an x-pipe installed and the car was loud obviously with an x-pipe and then it just got louder and louder over time over the winter and i was like the hell's going on so i'd ordered a cat back anyways um and when we went to install that borla cat back they were like, well, your mufflers, of, uh, both of them have holes in them. They were pretty uh, pretty solid, like the size of a Whopper or something. I don't know. It's a long time ago. But, yeah, so those are some things that you should definitely look out, look at and tackle if you have this vehicle, platform, whatever, 96 to 02. Radiator, I know a lot of people talk about that all the time. The hoses and stuff, just they crack. The timing chain, timing cover stuff here. Um, valve cover gaskets are leaking lower ball joints it's a very very big issue uh i think the biggest issue besides maybe rust with this uh this platform other than that as long as you take care of the stuff um the vehicle holds up just fine this is just regular maintenance that's coming up in my opinion that i'm gonna do and i've had a lot of it done the only thing that i haven't had done was the lower ball joints replaced um as i you know just went over a lot of the hoses are fine but i'm gonna replace those this fall and then at the same time have the radiator done and lower ball joints so everything will be tackled all at once and we'll just pre prevent the maintenance you know as they say in the military pmcs your vehicle so that's all we're doing guys anyways i appreciate you stopping by for the little update and kind of just things to look out and do for your forerunner 
Tacoma Overland build, whatever is going on with it. Um, yes, so I will hopefully have an update later, updated video later on the Mustang when I receive it this weekend when I go pick it up. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch y'all later. Remember, subscribe for future content and like it. Like the videos on the channel, check it out. There's different stuff definitely coming this fall. And I'll catch you later. Have a good one.